for a human being to wake up in true holistic knowledge and true the, the wisdom of the heart for a human being is very rare. And yet it is the most natural. This is the paradox. It is the most rare, and yet it is the most natural. And the rest is all due to ego. I don't want to be like you. I want to be like this. You, you, you are saying you, you um, subscribe to ego and to individuality, not knowing the, the limitations of individuality. In the universal consciousness, it has no comp- comp- competition, so it is not at fight. It supports the growth of all things. It supports the harmony of all things. And if one part is not, it is like a body. You want to be healthy, but you want bad kidneys. So bad kidneys is affecting every other thing. That is the the heart of holistic understanding. That uh, yeah, of course, um, that's it's very limited by its physicality. But mm. if you have unity of knowledge, doesn't matter. Look at uh, the sage Ashtavakra. He was all like this, but uh, God plays these games. <coughs> he is the most wise. They even they said that when the king uh, was. Um, Calling to find the most wise, uh, he was looking. King is looking for guru, and all different wise people showed up to to be the king's guru. Then Ashtavakra, young, he was young and crippled, it was like, like this, and the others were laughing. Many of them were laughing. Ah, where you think you're going, looking like that? You will, you will, you will, it, you will embarrass the king. The king doesn't want to see you. They're laughing, laughing. And then he also was laughing. And they say, Why are you laughing? He says, I am laughing because you think I am this body. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. That was Ashtar Bhakra. You are laughing because you think I am this body. Mm-hmm. And he became the king's guru. Mm-hmm. You see? And so this is limited knowledge that uh, human being thinks, Yes, I am, you know, look at me, I am something. This is Pure ignorance. Pure ignorance. And, uh, I don't even want to associate the word pure and ignorance. <laughs> Just ignorance. <laughs> Purity belongs to truth. May I say something? Yes, please. You do. For me, just to make the best use of this life, lifetime mm-hmm. is just to keep quiet mm-hmm. and to let you work in, mm-hmm. let you go working. Mm-hmm. Because yeah. otherwise, it's too complex, as you are saying. No? This is what you find as you are discovering, uh, going more deeply. You start to realize what the mind is like. The more you become more quiet, then you realize what ego is like, and what the cost of ego is, and how it is blinding, because all the beings are suffering from spiritual blindness. The more you go inside, you realize, you realize what ego is, and the cost of ego. The more you're in the mind, you, th- you, you talk ego. You feel, you know, I'm special. Who do you think you're talking to? This is ego. The more you're coming inside, you meaning you're becoming more universal. You know, from mind to heart, mind to heart, to universal consciousness. You more, you are just discovering. You think, but what do I do? Your sadhana is openness and faith. You have heard the message, no, and then somehow you open to um, welcome the, the the presence, welcome the power, and then you work a little bit. Okay, leave this. Don't worry about that. What is to stay like this? You see, human beings are attracted to knowledge, but diverse knowledge. Unitive knowledge is not conceptual knowledge. It's spirit knowledge. Spirit knowledge is not about this, 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 this. And spirit knowledge is being. Just being. We have to be attracted not to education and knowledge like this, but to simplicity and purity. Then the grace can flow, miracles flow, 
love flow, harmony flow, peace flow. All of this is flowing from this what I call unit of knowledge. So the word knowledge is 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 can be misleading for people to think knowledge means knowing lots of things. No, real knowledge means knowing and being the one thing, which is the core of all diversity, and this in you already. Every other thing is a derivative. Everything everything else is like a. A, a distortion, a fragmentation of the unity. So, if you find actually, we are meant to find the unity first, and then it manifests through the diversity. But we are attracted to the diversity, and we lose the the, the unity, the sight of the unity. You see, so these are not things to keep in the head. Ah, oh, oh, I have to do this. I said, no, 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 no. The mind is speaking like that. So you say, I keep quiet and make space, uh, make space. When you're quiet, your being becomes the temple of God. You're quiet. You're silent without identity. You're silent without doing silence. Just uh, mean that you're available, you see. You become the uh, temple, temple of uh, consciousness. This is the most beautiful. And, uh, not a person become tem- empty, but uh, empty means you are aware of the mind, you are aware of the world, you are aware of the senses. But awareness is not them specifically, but they cannot exist without awareness, and you abide in this. You come to realize everything that comes, it can only come because you are here to perceive it. They come and go, you are here to perceive it. All of them will leave you, and you lose nothing. You are here to watch the, the play of the world. This is the highest knowledge. But it is a mystery for the mind. So how can you call knowledge? You are not doing anything. So, OK, let's not call it knowledge. Let's call it heart consciousness. What does that mean? You may not feel inclined to, to meet such a question. It's enough. Not every question has to be answered. Sometimes not answering a question is more powerful than answering it, but not as a technique, as a gesture from heart, you see. Like cold? <laughs> yes, a little bit chilly, a little bit chilly. <laughs> uh. So what I share with you, there is an energy in it. Yeah? If you break it down into to make it conceptual knowledge, then it will take more time. Yeah? But now there's energy, energy, vibration, mm, there's a, a divine quality that comes, which are not about words and teachings. But you hear the you hear what you're sharing, and it is an energy. The more you become open to it, then it's as though you absorb everything without having to break. This is little finger. This is next finger. No, no. This is unitive comprehension. Just come. You feel the energy. Of you. No, okay. Then you yes. Welcome. Abide in me. Abide in me. I abide in you. Like this. Yes. Quick, quick way, you know. Because actually. Even all ways in the end will fall away. You know, all ways also are a journey in in Maya, but they they take you to the heart. Then when you when you realize that you realize, but the heart has always been here. <coughs> heart is not somewhere else. So therefore, all journeys in the end they are unreal, but they still have to happen. Mm. Because the person being unreal also, it came from the self, 
and must be attracted to the self. Mm. So, you know, but first, the person is unreal, the journey is unreal, the separation is unreal, but you must practice, and then your unreality drop away. Mm. You can't do it. If you say, if it's unreal, then what's the point? No, no, no. Mm. The point is that you still carry the virus of personhood, and that has to be treated. And devotion and true knowledge is the treatment, is the vaccination for this thing. It has to happen. The play of life like that. Okay, we we'll take you to your car so you arrived today. Look at this. Oh, take a picture this way so they can see the Chinese morning. Come, come this way. Waking up for, you know, totally waking up for. You're up now? <laughs> yeah, it was the first, you know. You were still in bed, actually. Mm -hmm. You said this thing when we were back at the... That you know, about the wrong kind of self-consciousness. Yes. You know, for the, I was just been sitting, or just looking, as I'm walking with it, you know. Uh-huh. And just feeling like... Definitely, sometimes something flares up in that way. Yes. Okay, you know. Yes, because there is a, there is a. We use the word self-consciousness, mm. but there is a different aspect: is psychological self-consciousness, mm. like personal self-consciousness, which is uh, uh, the consciousness that person, the personal sense of self has, mm. which often is associated with inhibitions, mm. and uh, and constantly checking. Mm if the self is coming across in this kind of way. So it's a derivative from the true word of self-consciousness, which self is consciousness, and uh, consciousness as self. You know? so, but often in our world, the use of the term self-consciousness has this kind of psychological, personal uneasiness about it. So whether someone is proud or shy, it is a form of self-consciousness and is connected with personal identity mm. and how personal identity reacts and interacts with the world that it perceives to be outside itself so so yeah this I uh, feel all the people have some portion of this psychological we are brought up mm -hmm. and I feel that uh, <clears throat> that us being in this form in the body is because we need to use the body as the instrument to work out our comic accounts. By karmic account, I mean to whatever. Everybody understand the word vasana? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whatever um, unresolved tendencies and uh, unresolved, uh, um, unresolved meaning that we are living in the, in the identity of personhood and all the complexities that come with personhood. That all of that is um, makes uh, makes us 
unnatural in our functioning and tense in the presence of others you know because uh, and but being in the company of the sense of otherness um, exposes our um, uneasiness that uh, this the psychological identity wants to convey that it is good and that it is fine but the very fact that it tries to do that is a sign that it is not good it's not fine because uh, to be good and to be natural is our natural state we don't have to try and de- demonstrate what is, what is natural any more than we are, we have to we don't go around saying look i'm breathing look because i mean this is natural and so uh, we don't say the things which are natural you just are that which is natural we say the things that we want to con- convey often about ourselves anyway and comes out of that psychological self consciousness but uh, true self consciousness is uh, one's natural awareness which is um uh, not entangled in personhood even the sense of a personal sense of self can uh, arise in it but doesn't have the poison you know we are aware of the sense of individuality all of that i feel is also natural in a certain level but we have all become intoxicated by it and so we lose i'm going to use the word like lose sight of but you cannot see the self that's another point to to the naturalness of self you cannot see it because it's not div- separate from you but while we have the conviction of personal identity the self appears separate like people say like i feel sometimes i'm really close to the self i'm getting nearer to the self these are not ultimate truths you know they come from the distortion starting with the feeling that when i say i it means the body it means my person it means my personal history but really i is uh, symbolic only of conscious i and consciousness are the same or i am is consciousness or beingness but i has been substituted with the i am this person i am this body who are you talking who are you looking at you looking at me no don't look at me this kind of uh, very shallow and very limiting sense of self no and so i see in your presence that 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 it's exposed more so like the the mind trying to be a certain way you know mm. that uh, and that's you know it's a good point because um really if you in the ordinary relationships of the world are not challenging enough to wake us up they just they feed and support the personal paradigm of self no so we were saying that only um uh the relationships like a relationship that we have is different because it challenges the person mm-hmm. and the person self being challenged or i don't like the word confronted but sometimes it is like that it feels confronted although i don't feel that an awakening being is trying to confront in an aggressive way the very presence um trigger an uneasiness the uneasiness that is inherent in the person cannot hide in the presence of like maybe a more uh, of a, a more awakened consciousness so that is the purpose we should look and see that that is the the significance that's the gift of being with say uh, an evolved state of consciousness because then it shows <gasps> the deficiency in us and uh, uh, those who are um, graced to make use of that who come into that environment uh, for awakening make use of that uneasiness and so oh, oh. because whether you meet say you may call a, a a sage or an awakened being or whatever uh that exposes that it they don't give that to you it is already there so it shows our uneasiness with ourselves on a personal on a personal level if we are strongly identified with ego with that feels like a 
intense discomfort and we want to get away. The ego wants to get away. The ego mind, the person wants to get away because it doesn't like feeling uncomfortable. You see? So it has a certain amount of an evolved being values the discomfort and can bring it forward and say, I feel so, I feel so um, lost in myself and say, okay, let's now, this is a chance. Because actually, as you're waking up, you come to realize the deficiency of personhood. You come to realize the shortcomings of an ego identity or personal identity. Eventually, you come to see the real evil and the oppressive nature of personhood, which we have to see in order to transcend. If we are, if we are endorsed the sense of person, then you, you, you just you stay trapped in that psychological state. You know. So of course, um, the difference with me being in satsang is that it, it presses all the buttons, or it exposes all the things that we're not that we, that makes us realize. Well, look, I'm, I don't want to be like this. You have to come to the place where I don't want to be. I, I can't stand myself. You see, if you are, uh, if you are feeling like that, mm -hmm. come, come. Uh, Who is it? <laughs> Everywhere he finds me, you know, he's oh, fine. Bon dia, bon dia. Bon dia, bon dia, Maestro Silva. Hi, hi. This is uh, Maestro Silva. This is my first friend from Portugal. This is my, to this day we are like that. This is my first uh, friend. He also was uh, shaping Sahaja with his machine. He was the first coming. We have been like this from all this time. Yeah. Isn't it? Yeah. About 12 years? No, it's more than... More? No, no, 14, Jesus. nearly, four, nearly four, 14. 13, 14, 13. It's because I am an older man. Yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> you got older and you carried me with you. Uh, what I can do? <laughs> we share the yeah. same troubles. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're all good. Where are you going? I go into the Silvia's farm. Ah, okay. Give some water for the fruit trees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, nice day. <laughs> you too. See you later. <laughs> the patient one is there. Yeah. Ah, Oscar. Oscar Wilde. <laughs> Oscar, Oscar Tame. Uh, Oscar Calm. Uh, it changed 90%. Uh -huh. Yeah, before you square the everything and uh, never be calm mm -hmm. and all the time hey, it's something uh, not never stay in the house. Mm -hmm. Many times yeah. the people in Saraja call me, hey Oscar stay here, come for take. <laughs> <laughs> and no like nothing happened. <laughs> That's the um, when a zempel the love can can do can make yes. okay i go okay, so ciao uh, silva thank you for uh, having see you soon <laughs> yes 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 Hi, oscar, oscar. Very we have something to finish up what I would you say i saw I them, them. <laughs> come in <laughs> Did we finish off our thing? Did we say something? Something with the crying. Mm. Okay. What was striking me, Guruji, you're saying that you can't, when you can't stand these things in yourself anymore. Mm -hmm. you know, yes, it's when you, yes, it's a, it's, you see, it's important to say that because in the world, that is seen as a problem, and it is if you don't go beyond. Yeah. If a human being come to a place where they're struggling inside and they can't go beyond. Because it's a birthing time, it's a reborn time. If they don't have someone to take you, you know, 
to midwife you through into freedom, then you go a bit not good. But in satsang, it is a, an auspicious time. Because you see, whoa, your world is not working, not the place where the ego is the tenant in the heart, it's not, it's not working. And then you have to get wise guidance to help you to say, oh, oh, don't identify with this. This is something to flush out. Don't even try to fix it. The thing is to be aware of it and stop identifying with it. You see? This is a really crucial pointing. To be aware of something which is a habit and don't identify. And then what happens is when you observe something without identifying with it, it changes it. It begins to slow down. The noise slow down, drifts away. And when it drifts away, what's happening is that you begin to feel yourself free of the contamination of that identity. And these two see, whoa, you never know how, or, how better than okay you are without all these things that we so long associate. And that is the truth for everybody who does it. That's why I say persist, you know, sit and allow the mind to play, but don't play with it. Stay only witnessing to be aware of it, but don't get engaged, don't log into it energy. And if you do this just long enough, at some point, it cannot hold your attention. It just drops away. And when it drops away, you're left by yourself, with yourself, as yourself. And you experience this, whoa. You say, well, I never thought I could feel so good. You, with yourself, by yourself, is not needing the mind. You make use of mind. Uh, guide the mind, uh, train the mind, but don't be a slave to the mind. Mind is a bad master. You are meant to, the whole purpose of coming into this is to transcend the psychological influence and identity. When you do, then you can come off the wheel. If not, then you have to keep on, because the body has a certain um, duration. Uh, the soul not. The soul has to go on until eventually it becomes clear of the, the of delusion. You see, if it doesn't, you just have to keep on. You know, until you wear out some clothes, you get some new clothes. But here, you wear out your clothes, you become naked in the in the in the true way, you know, mm. free of mind dependency and world dependency. Then, the joy that is the true nature of the world you can experience. But with ego, not. No one, not even an emperor, a king having many kingdoms, cannot enjoy this world as much as the self. Now they say you enjoy the self. Actually, when you say I enjoy myself, it really means this. I am the joy of myself. I live in the joy of myself. But we see everything the mind stole, everything the mind duplicated. I enjoy myself. I had so much fun. I enjoy myself. But it's still limited by uh, body-mind association. But you are the joy of yourself. This is, uh, and these simple things, it's not even like a teacher to learn that, but to, to, to awaken to this. The knowledge cannot be, knowledge cannot be, knowledge is not to be held. Uh, knowledge must combust into spirit. Spirit doesn't have to hold something. So this is why knowledge, when you speak to somebody who is speaking from knowledge, they speak, speak, speak because of what they know, but not of what you are. You see? Mm -hmm. Self-knowledge is that you are as you are. So in that, something is very, very diverse, very flexible, and can relate to different, different ways of conversing. It's completely adaptable because it's not holding any position. The self is universal. The person is very local, you know, and the person cannot be still. He has to keep on changing because everything in the manifest world is changing. Even if you say, I'm not going to change, then you just end up being a strangeness. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that part needs to change. And then, and then you may know that which is not changing. You see? And only that is. Is what you're saying, Guruji, is very much like a day to day experience, you know? Mm. Because it feels like this in the last days, or, or weeks, or sometime. It's like, you know, suddenly I'm sitting in my room or something, and suddenly 
a, a strange state of heaviness comes, you know, and suddenly I feel distance from you and God or whatever, and then I sit, you know, I say, no, this doesn't belong to me. I don't know where it comes from, but I sit and suddenly in minutes or something explodes and again mm -hmm. in the joy of my being. Mm -hmm. But it's like, it's like God or you are putting me to day to day in a practical way, burst up this this illusion of a me that comes strongly sometimes, you know, and I'm calling upon the mm -hmm. grace of God and you are fully with me. Yeah. It's not even the physicality of that state, is the interpretation of the state. Yeah. You see, because there are some people there in the body that's very sick and uh, but totally in the spirit, full power. Mm. We were talking about uh, Ashtabhaka this, this morning. Ashtabhaka is a total, total aware, total awake. So even sometimes you may have a condition where, but if you are detached and you're aware, that doesn't interfere with you, you see? So it's not that uh, that particular condition by itself, but it's the belief that that condition separates you from something. Yeah. That's more dangerous. Yeah. So the life is teaching that even these things can come, but they don't signal separation or division of the self. The self is indivisible. Yes. Once you know that, then you've used this lesson because everyone came into this incarnation to resolve certain vasanas. Yes. No? But I put it that you come to satsang to resolve all vasanas. You understand? I'm feeling in the one satsang, transcend everything about it. Come completely off the wheel. Don't finish this bout. No? Like some person in our, in our country, uh, we have a shop, like we had a grocery shop, my, my uncle, and there are some people, local people, they don't have money. So they have, uh, they have something where they come and they make an arrangement and uh, you take your groceries, we put it in a book and each week you come pay off, you know? And you try, you have to pay it off. You can't go too far back. Otherwise they say, no, we take you off and we cancel your account, you know? So you have to pay off and you, you, you take your groceries, you send your children with a list, then the, the, the shop takes it, the, the, you put the things, put the things, had it up, put it on your bill. You get it, no? So you have to keep clearing your account. Mm -hmm. What happens if one day, you know, you, you win the jackpot mm -hmm. and you come, you pay off all your bills mm -hmm. and you don't have to deal with the shop anymore even. You say, thank you. Thank you, sir, that I could, you look after us, support. But, uh, you know, now I can even give you a gift now. Mm -hmm. You understand? <laughs> so I say the satsangs have in mind that the satsang is to clear your total account, the ones that you are aware of and the ones you're not aware of. Mm -hmm. no? Which account can do that when you don't even know some of what you suffer from? You remember that in the person uh, is a spiritual, is a suffer from spiritual blindness. You don't, you're don't, not aware. That's one of the powers of Maya. You're not aware of what is keeping you bound and trapped in personhood. But satsang makes you become more aware. Like you say, when you meet, when we meet, and some, all these things come up. And this is a sign that you're in the right place that's exposing uh, by themselves those things. Only because we are weak, those things feel strong. As you're strong, they become nothing. Mm -hmm. so, but we all have to go through this play a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I say, if you focus now, the pointers have become very simple. And I see it's not because they were complex. Uh, uh, the teaching has become simple. But what happens is that the, 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 there's, a fear, there's a fear of the ego the fear in the ego is the, the, the f ego is a fear. Bon dia. The ego is is, uh, is 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 like this. The ego, he doesn't want to let go. And the, the the beingness, the soul, is attached to the identity in the ego. And so, when the identity is with the is with the ego, then what happens is all the teachings are helpful. It tries to put you away. No, no, it makes you feel bad. No, oh, I'm feel bad. And, and then some people leave satsang that mm -hmm. because of the toxicness mm -hmm. of identity. And they are a bit attached to identity. So the teaching, they can't apply it 
because it threatens the ego. That's the difficulty, that's the challenge. Not because the teachings are complex. We don't give you a big book, read all this big book. Now it's come very simple. Learn to observe. But when you observe, the mind comes strong. It even manifests in physical ways. Somebody come and say, no, I need you right now, come with me, and all kinds of things it can do. And it's been doing that all your life, distracting you from the opportunity of going, of evolving. This is very important you know, that you notice. When you know it, your head, then you see, oh, this thing has come now again, and I'm feeling like I really just don't want to go to satsang. You remember I told you one day, um, you know him now, uh, one man was, it was Sunday, we were having satsang in London where I'm living, and he comes to this bicycle to go satsang. But what happened was that he went into the park and he felt like, you know, I like how the park feels today. Seeing lovely people, I want to go and go and have a tea and stuff, and he thought, I don't want to go to satsang. So he's in a park and he said, okay, I don't go to satsang. But he said, my bicycle came to satsang. With him, of course, with it. <laughs> he says, I don't want to go. Well, why am I? Why somehow it's like something is calling. Of course, not the bicycle, not the bicycle came. Uh, the, the duality within himself. The mind wants to go out and explore a little bit of fun for today. But the heart is stronger. The heart says, no, go to satsang. So this duality is inside us. At one time, you'll, we will transcend the duality the negative duality. There's a, there's a divine duality. means that when you're awake, the, the duality, the manifestation, the duality and the unity are the same. One is the dynamic and one is non-dynamic. But when we are with ego, the duality is uh, it's like our, we get trapped in it. And if you look, you'll see, I mean, the world is trapped in the, the ego. All the darkness, all the chaos, all the everything, even the earth is rebelling against it because we have to go through that. The human being is not evolved enough to really, really live this, um, see the beauty of this world. This earth could be Eden, actually. This is Eden. All of this is Eden. This is the, this is the, this is the ongoing expression of Eden. So there's the Eden of the heart and the Eden of the, of the earth. And uh, because the, we, 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 we came out of Eden in the heart, and we come out of Eden in the earth also. Mm-hmm. One thing is not, it's not uh, all this earth, all this play, human beings going up and down, rah, 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 all of it. I'm going to tell you a secret. It's not true. Only dreaming, but we are so invested in the dream, we cannot see the unreality of it yet. As you begin to stay here, you resolve. Hmm? You, you may call, um, recede, revert back to your original nature, which is here. It's always here. That's all. That's all. In one sentence, by observing the mind, you automatically revert to the heart. That's it. Game up. Game up doesn't mean the end of joy. It is the freedom of joy. You see? Mm. We're going this way. Where are you going? This way. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just at the end of the text, I mean, Cricket started singing. Mm-hmm. He said something about the expression of full, full joy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and the Cricket was like, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah hello? <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, blessed are we that have that direct confrontation. These are con- confronting you for us. Yes. Where you, 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 our master, can... But you say, everyone in South Carolina has to experience this struggle mm-hmm. of ego and, but some of us are so lucky that you point right to it yes right now yeah, that's what we were talking about the other day like um i also i feel like god's gift is the the love he puts in the devotee's heart mm-hmm. because like like some of the vasanas that you have to um, um point out to us like in our regular relationships mm-hmm. if people try to point them out 
maybe it even ends the relationship, you know? You hear that? You hear that? The friendship. Or the you hear that? Right? That sometimes, actually, we're saying that, you know, you have to, when you're in satsang, because grace took you to satsang, then you can bear the confrontations, yeah? because, you know, it's for a higher good. In our daily, normal relationships, daily life, you become comfortable in your person. To, you're not comfortable, but that's the deal. So, if someone were to challenge your weaknesses, yeah, you be fight to break up relationship. No, I'll leave and so, no. Which it can happen with your guru also, but only a teacher of that caliber uh, who is graced to do that can give uh, that you you will stay there and you'll work you will understand that this is your real chance to go beyond because the mm, the usual relationships we have in the world you will fight to defend your ego mm -hmm. is the only place that can the slaughterhouse of the ego is such something it's not a nice word I shouldn't use it. <laughs> <laughs> the transcending place of the ego is such something okay is this Lord? No, the, the, the transcending place is to go to satsang because then you're confronted in an environment. Everybody's confronted a bit, but you realize it is for the good, and immediately you begin to feel the space opening up. So it is like uh, you are having a rebirth. The contractions begin when you come to satsang. And nobody's enjoying the contractions. <laughs> yeah, but the baby come in, and the baby is you. Isn't it funny? The baby is you. We're giving birth to ourself. So Lakshmi was pointing out again. You see, what we are having in satsang, you wouldn't accept it anywhere else in the world. You stand up for your rights, you know. Listen, you know, what you're doing, no, that's unfair to me. And you defend your position as your ego. You don't. Only in the satsangs, hmm, or in the temple, in the church, in the synagogue, in prayer, in the real, mm, mm, genuine search for truth, then you'll get confronted with some things. You start to feel, oh, you know, oh, this, this. And you won't blame it. You will sometimes blame it on your teacher or something. You'll blame it. But at some point you have to retreat and say, actually, no, no, I can see it is good. And you have to confess, it is good. It is good for me. Why to be challenged in this way? You understand? Mm -hmm. But we don't go immediately, straight away. Huh? Mm -hmm. Oi. Hi. Good, good. Hello. 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 Hi, hey. <laughs> I want some vegetables and take me to the village. V vegetables? <laughs> can I see? Can I just see? Yes, for sure. Excuse me. <laughs> Very important satsang coming up. <laughs> Look at that. What is this? Oh, it's a weapon. I was thinking of buying a zucchini, but they're too big. It's a weapon. <laughs> On the other side. Whoa, it's very nice. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. So we have a... still okay here. Yes, yes. Wow. What about we can we take a, a few and then some for yeah, the village? Some you can have for the village. We can have try. some. Yeah, no, no. We want. Uh, we can even eat. Uh, we can even. Somebody can carry one. One. No. Thank you. Thank You're you. Thank you. What is Thank your you. name? Ego. Ego. Yes. Ego. Okay. Igor. Thank you. Ego. 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 Okay. Thank you. Wow. You're welcome. Very nice. That's Very all? nice. Yeah, it's good. It's good. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Somebody. Uh, uh, nothing is mine, actually. So. This is true. <laughs> I'm just looking at it. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. See if they don't shake so much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. This one, this one. Mm -hmm. We, we thank you. Have. Thank you. Have a beautiful much. day. Have a yeah, beautiful you day. Too. Thank you, brother. Thank you. All of you. Oh, good, good. See you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sorry have a beautiful day. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> All is good. Nice. Have a beautiful day. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We give you a push start. Go on. Uh, yeah. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you.
talking about something we were talking about? Anybody we were, we were... Yesterday I was talking with Lakshmi and uh, we said that normally the, 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 the ego identity, personal identity has become so uh, normalized, so standardized, so acceptable in the world that um, protected in a way. Ego has become so protected. I am associating, I am putting together ego and personal identity as the same thing. No? Which I, I say is the main cause of all suffering, all pain to ourselves and to others. The main cause of all the suffering in the world is due to personal identity. I don't know if anybody has come to see that yet. I would hope that everyone in satsang sees that. That personal identity that's not been resolved in the heart is the main cause of all trouble and suffering in the world. And that actually uh, personal identity has become so normalized in life that actually we are not, we are not, uh, it's as though we, we don't want to be challenged about our personal identity. Nobody wants to be challenged about their personal identity. It is top security on personal identity. So even your personal relationships, your family, friends, work, associates, strangers, nobody is comfortable to be challenged in their personal identity except in satsang, except in a, a spiritual environment. An authentic spiritual environment uh, does not tolerate or accept that your person is yourself. And only there you will allow yourself to be challenged. You understand? If you, in the form of a personal identity, is protecting your identity and still attending like a satsang, you will not make any progress. That is as clear as space for me. So even people who come to satsang, they do themselves feel the person, even if a guru should point to the person, they, and it's, but in that context, it is okay. Because whether it's in front of an enemy or in front of God, the ego is going to come up. It's going to, you know. But then where you go from that? Because in an authentic, loving environment, it need not be outwardly loving. The love itself is the, is the intention to interact on the basis of truth. It will stir up. And even... I find, for myself I can speak, even if I don't speak, things come up for people. And are you willing to be so free that even if people find uncomfortable things come up, you are willing to bear that? And not only to bear it, to maybe be a supportive guidance to help to transcend that when that opportunity is presented. If people say, I want to go beyond this. You see, if you are someone, oh, you don't want to interfere in other people's stuff, then in a sense, uh, you may say, I only want to be free for myself. But freedom is not a selfish thing. It doesn't mean you should go out and start to preach at people. That's also not true. 
but just living in the light of your own consciousness is sufficient light that even if you don't interact, it's emanating and radiating influence around you and transforming the energy field around you. And that energy field can go very far. The energy field, an awakened consciousness in a human body on this earth can go very far. Just like you have um, a radio station, television station, is situated in this place, and it can radiate the images to countries uh, thousands of miles ago. And those energy waves are not as powerful as the heart wave. Listen, when I speak with you, open your heart and mind to be enormous, okay? That's not ego. That's not ego. If ego wants to be enormous, it's like enormously ego. Usually ego wants to shrink or wants to, you know? So what I'm saying is that I'm not showing people how to develop the self. The self does not need any development. The self is ever perfect. If the self needed development, it would not be true. It's the person that undergoes transition and development, and thank you, and all of this kind of thing. So really open, just open to, you, may, you won't be able to write down and itemize anything, but open to, the possibility that the God consciousness is unlimited, open to the possibility of welcoming the unlimited within yourself. Because you already carry, you already carry the seed. You are the seed of it. You see? So uh, the point was where you would be willing to um, encounter a kind of challenging presence to the ego, knowing that it's not, it's not in a war with your ego. It's shining light on the ego, and to make use of that to transcend the ego, uh, that will happen in the environment that is a grace-filled environment. Not just knowledge-filled, but a grace-filled environment. You see? And uh, other relationships or association, even to do with family, even to do with partners, even to do with your children, even to do with your co-workers, even to do with life generally, we stand, tend not to stand for, you know, you don't charge my ego, even in spiritual communities. People, hey, hey, you know, no, we think you're talking, no, no, that's me, you know, you're still defending the ego. That's how powerful. And this is why I share that the teachings have become very simple. But following the teachings is still very hard. That's the main challenge. Not understanding the teaching, but actually Im implementing them in your heart is difficult. Because it will mean that the, the, the negativity, that is the internal sickness of human beings, is, is not allowed to prevail. It's challenged also. Sure, when we say, when we say, I trust you, it's quite easily said, but we're actually saying, I trust everything, yeah. everything that happens, yes. everything that doesn't happen, yeah. the bell, yeah. everything. Yeah. You have to go, that trust means emptiness. You, have to be, you become empty. Emptiness starts like a practice, and becomes the essence. It doesn't actually become, actually. It just unbecomes the false. It starts like a practice, just to be empty, learn to leave things. Who is speaking to? Is speaking to this, the self in its manifestation as personal. Just don't get involved. Let the mind, don't fight the mind, don't fight the world. Just learn to be. Learn what be means. Don't become entangled with strategies and techniques about where you don't need to disengage, stay empty. Then the mind is furiously trying to find a picture for emptiness. It's so, oh, gotta be empty. No? It will still be there, still try, try, try. But gradually 
if you don't engage, if you don't log into the things appearing, at some point they just it's as though they just dissipate. Their hypnotic power just drops away. And something is left, and I don't want to say what that something is. I don't want to spoil you. Well, I cannot spoil your enjoyment, but don't just anticipate, discover that. Unspeakable. It's unspeakable, indefinable. That's the peace that is beyond understanding, meaning beyond the mind. And that peace allows you to see God beyond visibility. That peace. You see, it cleans everything. I used to say it autocorrects, but it doesn't even need to do that. Because the thing that needs to correcting is not even true. So it doesn't need to correct, just become empty, meaningless. But I will tell you, you can prove this today. Why? Because I own I only know kind of the nowness of being. So that's a powerful attitude, this nowness of being. When I say now, I don't mean I'm not talking about instant, I'm talking about the timeless, the 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 thing that's not waiting for a result later. It just abide in it, just by abide in it. Doesn't matter if it feels difficult, doesn't matter you. But not just tolerate, don't tolerate the quiet. Learn to just be empty. That anything you perceive through the senses or through the mind, you see, just let it be there. It's only a passing phenomenon. And you return to yourself. Because all our energy is going out to take care of your projections. All the energy we are losing is going out to take care, to control your projections. So just learn to leave that. Because even when we leave it, we still keep emptiness as a concept. It is not a concept. That is why I say empty beyond the concept of empty. The mind goes empty beyond. It has to do that also for a bit. Then you realize that you put a lot of effort to discover the effortless. Who is this one that discovers it? Hmm? The soul doing a term in life, in this life form, this life form at the moment, using up its the gigabytes of one lifetime to find what? Not to create, to find, to find the one thing, to find the one thing that can never be lost. It only is lost in the mind. Mind makes loss, mind makes separation, mind makes everything. If you listen with an open heart, you may find that your listening is already the sadhana. Direct, so you don't have to listen now. You have to go step one to do this, step two to do. This. If you listen in your heart, your listening is your sadhana accomplished. And you may find that in listening, there is a transformation. You don't know what happened, you don't have to describe it, but you are made more empty. And the emptiness is key. It's like somebody asks you, You were up there with Guruji, what was he talking about? You can't remember. So, um, yeah, it, uh, no, no, no. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Can't remember. It's okay. I'm not going to test you like that. Except one time I surprised you. What did I say just now? Were you listening? Yes. What did I say? It's okay. You understand? You can't figure it out. Were you listening? Ah, oh, Baba, you're so with you. Okay. What did I say? Uh, <laughs> it's okay. 
It's okay. The true teaching cannot give you anything. It can only take away.